Saber's up for an adventure. Hey everybody, with the Savers of Uldum expansion coming out soon, uh, my teammate Bloodyface and I came together and made a set review so we could uh, go over all the cards and give you guys a sense of how powerful we think some of these cards are going to be. So um, enjoy and uh, have fun when the expansion comes out. I'm get a little gander what this does. Oh, sure. Wow. Alright, anyways. So Timic Surge. Or actually, should we go over the quest first? That yeah, might make more sense. Sure, I think the quest is yours as well. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and do the quest, because... That seems pretty relevant. Uh, corrupt the Waters, one mana, play six Battlecry cards, and your reward is you get a two-minute hero power that, where your battle cries trigger twice this turn. So that includes all battle cries you play, um, which is really tempting because... But Shutterwalk's nine mana. Mm -hmm. and is, there, is there a clean way to discount Shutterwalk? Define clean. Yeah put a card in your deck that's not terrible farsight but it's not guarantee uh, sorry a consistent way to coin get eight it's a bit more consistent than farsight yeah if there's that's gonna be the biggest problem for me i don't think obviously, you can yeah because obviously if you play this card you want to play it with shutterwalk mm -hmm. and if you can't even use the hero power with shutterwalk that's a pretty big epic fail um yeah I mean, you can use it with Hagatha. I mean, it's still decent. It's basically you get a Spirit of the Shark for two mana. Mm -hmm. You have so to use it every turn, though, but yeah. Shaman is a deck that loves to do nothing. And this, even uh, post Hagatha, like, Battle Cries that generate stuff, like Cable Rat, after that, you get two Lackeys in your hand, which each of those give you a spell as well on top of that. So it's good value. This card's good. It just kills me that I can't use it with Shutterwalk. Yeah, there's not, like, a... It's not like old school Shutterwalk where you're. Well, well, yeah, yeah. First of all, you can't use the Battle Cry with it. But also, just the deck you're making isn't going to be like Shutterwalk where it's like, oh, I Shutterwalk, I'm now going to win the game over the next couple turns because I just keep playing Shutterwalks because it got bounced and because I'm life drinkering and stuff like that. So it's going to be quite different than what we've seen before. I feel like. I mean, I'll, I'll give it a two. I, But that's kind I, It's Two is kind of me saying, I don't know if this is going to be playable. I could I could see this end up not being playable just because it's uh it's it's just the, the downside of having a quest in your deck just you're you're down a card from the get go, um, but this hero power is pretty solid. It, I think it's like the priest quest where at least the payoff's there. It's not like the rogue quest where the payoff is a stupid fiery war axe. <laughs> like with this card, the payoff is there. So to me, it's a two. I'm gonna be optimistic and give it a three. And say that someone's gonna find a way to make it good. I think I think someone's gonna find a way to at least win an open qualifier with it. Wire is around here. He, he's gonna make something work. Someone's gonna win a qualifier with it. I'll, yeah. I'll at least say that. So it's a two in my book. Okay. All right. Um, how are we gonna do this? Since I just went and uh, we skipped the first card. Sure, I'll do evil totem then. Just with the last two. Okay. Uh, two mana zero two minion. It's a totem as well. Evil totem. At the end of your turn, add a lackey to your hand. Lackeys are good. Um, stuff that sticks around for multiple turns are good. Will this stick around for multiple turns? Okay, let's think about this. What's being run right now in the meta? Mage, hunter, rogue, warrior. Against mage, this probably sticks around. Against warrior, sometimes, not always. Against Hunter, probably not. And against Rogue, mm, on two maybe. But not for much more than one turn, likely. So by itself, it's not going to do that much. It's two mana add a lackey to your hand. Sometimes it gets a bit better. Um, there's some other synergies that we kind of saw um, with the rest of these cards here. But I think this card's playable. I don't think it's like the nuts. I... I think this card is just better than Evil Cable Rat. That I agree. I do think it's better than Evil Cable Rat. I mean, you get it into turn, so it's not strictly better. I mean, obviously, this card by itself, like, once you develop, like, it's actual development on the board. Your opponent has to answer it. Yeah. Evil Cable Rat isn't developing the board at all. Um, so, yeah, I mean, to me, Evil Cable Rat's a two. This card is better than Evil Cable Rat. That doesn't necessarily make it a three. It just makes it a better two. Um, Maybe with the rest so, of the cards that are getting printed, it could be a three. But there's not uh, even that many, actually. I'm just trying to look at the other cards here that are being revealed. Actually, I, I might change it to a three. 
Does every shaman want this card? Maybe. I think yes. Every shaman right now doesn't want evil cable, right? Though. I so... guess maybe not in hard murloc shaman, but... I don't think aggro tempo shaman would want this. Would I, I guess they would. They don't have a lot to do on two. I actually know they do. They have underbelly. They can just hear power. They can equip the uh, Lickum. The fact that like shaman can play this and underbelly angler might make this card better because sometimes you play the underbelly angler and your opponent panics and they use more resources than they wanted to to answer it. And then you play evil totem and maybe they just don't have the answer for it. You know, it's like when they play the first angler, you answer it. Then they play the second angler and you just happen to not have an answer for it. This card kind of feels similar where, all right, well, after my two anglers, I play an evil totem. Because mm -hmm. if you ever get two lackeys off this... It, that's a three. Happy. Like, if you, get, if you get two lackeys, easy three for me. It's just a matter of how consistently can you get it off. Because I don't want to hold on to it and then go, like, two mana totem plus four mana splitting axe on turn six. Because that's not acceptable. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a three. I think. I, I think. I think. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna change mine to three as well. And the thing is, if it sticks around for two turns, it could stick around for even longer. And as soon as it sticks around, you can start doing other stuff with it, like Vecino or Totemic Surge or some other stuff. Oh, it's also probably worth noting the new Lackey, Titanic Lackey. Sure. Uh, it's just a uh, one mana one one. Give a friendly minion plus two health and taunt, which is. I find this to be a nerf because to me I, I think like I usually want uh, Cobalt Lackey, Ethereal Lackey and then if it's still early on in the game Faceless Lackey. Mm -hmm. and Faceless Lackey is usually always fine but I feel like Goblin Lackey and Witchy Lackey are the two ones I usually don't want and having a 66% or 60 chance of hitting a Lackey that you like every time is good but now there's only a 50% chance I don't really categorize, I don't think this card is as good as uh Ethereal Cobalt and uh, and uh, Faceless. I think it's worse than all three. I think it's maybe comparable to Witchy and Goblin. I think it's more of a defensive-ish one, whereas the other ones are kind of just flexible in general because Rush can be aggressive, like offensive or defensive. Cobalt Lackey can be removal or you know aggression. Or th whereas this is kind of only defensive. It's also like it just gives you more outs, right? Yeah. In, a, in like a situation where your opponent's got a bunch of giants in play or just like has a uh, waggle pick or something in play like before yeah lackey's never had a defensive out mm -hmm. other than just please do i please roll a taunt off faceless lackey right like how many times have we seen faceless lackey pray for a taunt that's the only way i can stay in this game this card's way better than that especially like with miscreant make a miscreant a one six taunt all right, that's pretty good. I, I think the, maybe, I, maybe I, it was too harsh on it. It's actually. I don't want to say it's a nerf. I just want to say the range is a little bigger now because it. It is. It's another. Obviously, it's another one where you're like, I hope they don't have Cobalt Lackey right now to kill my apprentice or something. But also, it's like, oh, I hope they don't get Titanic Lackey to stop Lethal or something like that. I, I think it just adds more flexibility to it. It dilutes the pool. I'll say it. It makes it less likely yeah, you get exactly pool, what you which want. Is a bummer. I I don't know if it's an overall. I think it's overall. For negative just because i have i don't know cobalt and ethereal lackey are just like so insane <laughs> i just want to hit the insane cards this card's not insane but it's acceptable know, yeah okay to me it's a net negative but it's it's cool Start all right uh so yeah next card totemic surge uh it's, it's the opposite of totemic might which was zero mana give your opponent or totems plus two defense this is plus two attack uh, this is a lot better. Uh, actually, a legit zero mana card. Uh, something kind of decent. No, actually not decent to get off Agatha. What am I saying? Terrible to get off Agatha. <laughs> you won't have any totems after you play Agatha. Yeah. Um, so yeah, actually another Hagatha nerf, which Hagatha already kind of felt a little bit underwhelming. So I don't know. Doesn't seem that good. It's probably a one, right? Probably. It doesn't currently fit in decks that... Okay, it doesn't currently fit in any Shaman decks, and I don't think this is going to be the make or break of the totem synergies. Like, it works with, the, obviously, the four hero powers, Mana Tide. It works with 
the evil totem, and I think Nightmare Amalgam, and that's it. Nightmare Amalgam. Like, if this if this thing even buffed... <sighs> buffing your totem for two. Uh, I mean, if you go totem, totem. Mm -hmm. Coin totem. You're not winning, you're, you're Coin not winning totem. the game. If you're going totem, totem, you're a control deck. Yeah. It's hard. You just... Yeah, I just can't see it you want to be doing more powerful things with tempo if you're a tempo deck and if you're a control deck there's no way in hell i'm running totemic surge in that because that could just be something better yeah That's a if this was when we were running like tuscar totemic and totem golem maybe this sees play but yeah i could maybe see that along with the totems we currently have but i think with what we do have it, this isn't good enough yeah it's a one for me so one for me. It's like all the way in the middle of the sheet, by the way. Oh. Oh, I must have done this one out of order, my bad. What the, uh, I, I, I typed them in based on how they show up in order here, but sometimes they change the order around based on like when it was shown on, uh, on yeah. stream or something. Um, Sandstorm Elemental. Two mana, two, two. Uh, battle Cry, deal one damage to all enemy minions. Overload one. So this is kind of Maelstrom Portal. Except it doesn't have it can't be it can't benefit from spell damage. Um, it can benefit from the battle cry from the, the 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 quest. It also overloads one, which can be used with Thunderhead or Lickum. It's an elemental; you can get this randomly. I mean, this this card's good. I really hope when you play it, Derude Sandstorm just starts <laughs> playing. Do -do 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 -do. Like the whole board just turns into a giant disco scene. You can play this in an aggressive deck or a defensive deck. Control, whatever you want to call it. I, I think I would give this a three. I think a three is also acceptable. Maelstrom Portal was insane. This, on average, gives you a, a better statted minion. Maelstrom Portal was like a four. This is like a three. Yeah. I, I mean, fair. it does give you a better minion on average, but you do get that overload. Yeah. But it's nice that it has a synergy with Shutterwalk, and uh, I guess it's all upside with Shutterwalk. That's yeah, nice. definitely. Especially after you've played two of them, too. Mini flame strike or whatever. Yeah, with the Hagatha, if it's in there, too. Yeah, they're, they're, it just gives you more ways where Shutterwalk is just good, even if you don't have all of the battle cries in your deck alive in the uh, pool. Yeah. Next up, Mogu Flesh Shaper. 7 mana, 3, 4, Rush. Costs 1 less for each minion on the battlefield. So if we compare this to Sea Giant, one second. Sea Giant costs 3 more mana and gets plus 7, plus 4. <laughs> Yeah, I think it tells you all you need to know. Wait, say that again? What? If you compare it to Sea Giant, Sea Giant, or not plus seven, plus five, plus four. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. Sorry, math is hard. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't think three mana is worth that stat disparity. Like, they also do different things, though. Sea Giant is, is meant to be like, you know, big minion sort of either push hard or like if you're in mage, it's a different thing. But. This is like, if there's a reasonably sized board, I can play this as like a a removal tool, but it's... Okay, let, let me rephrase this. How, what mana cost would this have to be to, to be played without the uh, the restriction? Oh, without the restriction? Like... Uh, Four? Three? three? I think That's at three, good. that would be broken. Three mana, three, three for really rush? Good. Yeah. So you need at least what three or four things on the board for this to be like acceptably played three things on the board i don't think is good enough four things on the board but the problem is you can't play it on turn three or right 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 no no, no. Could, this... but it's tough it just mm. this card's not coming down to like four or five and the three four with rush so turn four and turn five i don't care about three four rush okay i don't know it's just it's just too weak to me like we're just trying to think if if you if you let's say you your opponent has a big board, which is obviously not always the case. So against control this sucks. So this has to yeah. be against like a mid range or a tempo or an aggressive deck. And against that you could play this plus AoE and then have like this left over, but it doesn't work C with it's gonna be a more reliable Yeah, I I, I, don't, I don't I don't think this is that great. Yeah. That's why I gave it a one. Okay. I think I'm on board with that. Okay, next one, Vecina. Four mana two six. While you're overloaded, your other minions have plus two attack, which is interesting. Very defensive stat line, which makes sense with what the card's trying to do. You play this with like uh, Voltaic Burst 
five mana, the Voltaic Bursts do three each. Or even without Voltaic Burst, if you just overload with stuff on board, this is like a mini roar. I think this is a good mini card. Roar. Man, now that you mentioned Savage Roar, this card seems a lot better. <laughs> yeah, especially if we're running lackeys and stuff too, when you start flooding the board. Obviously, like, Totem isn't the biggest thing to include. Like, you're just hero power because that's not what you want to be doing. But if... I don't think you run this in a defensive deck. This is definitely in a more aggro or mid range deck. I mean, this is an auto-include in board controls... Uh... Aggro, overload. yeah. Yeah, overload deck or aggro deck. Yeah, this card's pretty powerful. Yeah, I'd give it a three. I think I'm on board with a three. It doesn't go in every shaman deck, but in the decks that it does go in, you're happy. Uh, next up, Splitting Axe. Four mana, three, two. Weapon. Summon copies of your totem battle cry. So again, the totems you have available are the four hero powers, the evil totem, the mana tide, and the nightmare amalgam. I believe that's it. Oh, there's a flame tongue, but we're not really running that. Oh, a serpent yeah. ward. <laughs> that's a totem. Yeah, two that's mana zero two. It's hilarious. Uh, yeah, right now we have evil totem mana tide. It's great with those. Um, if you ever summon two copies, or like if any combination of those two, this card's excellent. Um, but if you already have two mana tides out, or like an evil copy. And because that scenario very rarely comes up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this card's just a one. It's just too hard to. I think I agree. Yeah. This was two mana. Be crazy. Ooh, two mana. That'd be like a treasure. Would you play this at three? I still don't uh, think I would. Yeah, I still don't think you would. No. Okay. Plague of Murlocs. Three mana spell. Transform all minions into random Murlocs. So both sides of the board. I think this is an easy three. Maybe a bit higher than that. So you can hard run this, which lets you do a couple of things. One, you can deal with a board of giants or a board of anything for that matter. Um, and two, if you're running like Murloc decks yourself, you could, or just tokeny stuff, you could make Murlocs. But I think the, the, the main application is, is removal. Uh, you could also get this off of Haunting Visions. So this doesn't have to be in your deck, but I, I think you would run this in, in Shaman, at least in a sideboard or something, if you're doing Specialist. But even maybe as a one or two of in, in normal, like, Control Shaman. Yeah, I think this card's a three. Uh, it's hard for me to go higher than a three, because when you're, when you're like, in an oh shit situation, this card doesn't actually save you a lot mm -hmm. of times. Like, if you're at, like, 12 or whatever, and your opponent has a bunch of giants, and you transform their board, and they get, like, a war leader, for example. Like, what are you going to do? You're probably just going to die. Um, so like when you're low on cards and you don't really have a way to deal with like the murlocs that come out of it effectively hey, that's kind of an issue but mm -hmm. like for just trying to like maintain control of the board like if your opponent just goes mountain giant conj or whatever like yeah obviously this card's excellent helps you stay at parity um, but yeah it, this card never really pulls you ahead mm -hmm. but it, it, the three mana makes it really good like, I think this card's even playable at four mana. Um, yeah, it's definitely playable at four mana. It'd probably even be playable at five mana, too. Um, so, yeah, three mana. It's kind of interesting. The card doesn't, like, become, like, exceptionally good at three mana because what are you going to do with that extra mana? You still need to have something else as well with this to actually clear the board. Either, like, Scheme, Storm, sometimes Maelstrom cleans up, but not often. Um yeah, we really don't want to use like extra AOE kind of yeah. issue. Yeah, this this can also be used as like a mini hex, right? True. Yeah, I mean, I think three's solid. It could be a four, but it's it's hard for me to give a reactive card a four. Um, like obviously it's a great answer. It's like it's brawl a four. I don't know. Well, it's a good yeah. thing we don't have to rate those cards. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, next up is. Weaponized Wasp. Three mana, three, three, battle cry. If you control Lackey, deal three damage. Um, so we have one Shaman way to get a Lackey. Exclusively Shaman, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be really hard if that's the only way. That and, uh... Cable Rat? Is there another way? Yeah, there's Cable Rat. Did they make another way? Check real quick. They didn't make any other ways. Wow, I'm really I, surprised. I could have sworn they were going to make at least one more Shaman one. Huh, I guess not. 
So it's just evil cable rat and evil totem. Uh. Wait, does Shaman actually have no current ways to make lackeys? Sludge Slurper. Oh! Okay, I was uh, gonna say, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure they have one more. Okay. Okay, never mind. Um, so you have... My page is bugging out. God damn it. No worries. So you have six... So there's three unique ones, and none of them are legendary, so you can run six lackey generators in total. That's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's fine. Six is the number I was looking for. Three damage is good. It's not great. I'd give it a two. I'm gonna give this a three. I think this card is good. If if you consistently get it off, it becomes a flanking strike, right? And flanking strike was real good. And this this yeah, is arguably a bit it's better. Not it's not flanking strike though. It's not it's flanking strike. You play on empty board. Yeah. I think this, with are this can go face though. That is good. Yeah. The thing with lackeys though is like when you like all the lackey generators that shaman has are single generators. Like they don't miscreant. <laughs> Right. So they're only getting one lackey at a time, which means that uh, when you play, when you get your lackey, generally you're going to want to use. I mean, you could save it with weaponized wasp, but it's like, I don't know. I mean, it's good. Like, it's obviously a good card. It's just splitting hairs at this point. Works with a quest as well. Can deal. Can become a fireball. True. Would you? I don't think you'd play this in control, though. Would you? You would definitely run the lackeys in control. Maybe not all six of them, but... Play so you would play Sludge Slurper, obviously. Uh-huh. And you would play Evil Totem, too? It, I'd have to look at the meta. I I think most of the time, no. But... Yeah. I, I guess... Well, you also need to get Battlecry stuff out to complete the quest, right? And and Lackeys plus the like Cable Rat is, is ways to do that. Uh, Yeah, I guess so. that's true. Actually, it's actually a really good point. Yeah, Lackeys are a really quick way to complete the quest. Cheap and, like, useful as well, because a lot of the battle cries... I mean, none of the battle cries are, like, completely useless, but, I mean, a lot of Lackeys can be used to help fight for board, like, rush, give something taunt, like, the Cobalt Lackey deal damage, even the Faceless Lackey just to put stuff on board to actually trade into. Like, again, it's hard to look at... A, it's hard to look at these cards now and say, okay, here's the 30-card deck we're talking about, but I think you could reasonably run the Lackeys in here. Yeah. Anyways, I, I don't think it's like a four or anything, but I, I would give it a three. That's fair. I'm gonna stick with two. Sure. Uh, I guess this one's mine. Earthquake. Seven mana spell, deal five damage to all minions, then deal two damage to all minions. So it's another AoE for Shaman on top of Scheme, Storm, uh, and the Sandstorm Elemental we've seen. I. It's good that, so what I like about this card is that as opposed to Scheme, you top deck this, it's playable. Or even if you drew it like one or two turns ago, like this is just deal seven damage to any minion. And sometimes it's deal with some death rattles. So it's fine against something like Token Druid, um, Mech, Hunter. It's fine against Rogue. The problem is it costs seven mana, so it's not really usable that early. I think the effect is good. I think the, the, the mana cost that it's priced at makes it, difficult to use in most situations so i think this might be a two i don't think this is like I, I think the effect is powerful i just don't think it's costed in a way that makes me want to run it in every in like in, in the control decks or at least maybe yeah. it's a one of or something or something you discover off of haunting visions that's like okay i don't know if i would include two of these i might not even include one of these in my deck honestly i think it's really ironic that they made it seven damage when <laughs> mountain giants are plaguing the meta well, if this did like, if this did eight, I think it'd still be a problem if they go. I guess they're kind of scared to play giant naked, so maybe they do have to wait till like giant coin cons or something. I think this card's a two. I don't think it's unplayable. But yeah, I, th I think it's a two as well. Never set Thrasher three mana four or five. Whenever this attacks, deal three damage to your hero. Um, not really feeling this card. Like, I mean, usually don't care too much about damaging yourself but if you, ideally you want to get two attacks with your minions for them to be good right you get two attacks with this guy you took six damage that's a pit lord so what if like, you look at diseased vulture does that change your opinion at all oh yeah i forgot there's other diseased vulture four mana three five or two hero takes damage summon a random three cost minion uh four mana is a lot okay 
This is like a three mana two four. Be excellent. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, I this feel like it's, it's a very specific curve that's not always going to happen, but I feel like this is one way you can take advantage of it. There's also Nether Soul Buster. Three mana, one five. Battle Cry gain plus one attack for each damage a hero has taken this turn. Also not uh, great. Right. That's that's way more conditional, though. The Vulture, I can kind of see. The, the, the Buster by itself isn't that great. I just think that, like, by itself, mm -hmm. this card's terrible. The three drop? Disease Vulture. Yeah. No, the the nerf set Thrasher. Yeah, yeah. Three, five, or the four five. Mm -hmm. The Disease Vulture's mm, still okay, I guess. Because you can, like, life tap and just play Flame Imp, I guess. Four man, three five's not terrible. Yeah, I, I just don't think I want to take, like, oodle, like, just large amounts of damage. I mean, with this, you're just literally closing out the game as fast as possible, right? This is a game that's trying to win by, like, turn 6-7. Oh, sorry, really this is... Really hard to do. True. Really hard to do when you're playing 3-drops and 4-drops in your deck. This also means... the decks... Yeah, go ahead. I mean, the deck would have to curve out at these two cards. And... I don't know. This also means that you couldn't, that you can't, uh, it, it it takes away from the magic carpet synergy. This is too clunky. Warlock's, Warlock shines when it plays Grim Rally and Evil Genius and Egg and all that stuff. And, you know, just the classic zoo, all one drop, two drop deck. That's where Warlock shines. Like, I just think that Nerf Set Thrasher and Disease Vultures just, it's not really what Warlock wants to do. I don't oh. know. No, I think that's fair. I, I, I would give it a two. I'm going to give it a one. Sinister deal. One mana, spell, discover a lackey. So we've gone over what the six lackeys are. We kind of know that. We know lackeys are powerful. Um, there's some synergy with some of the with the next card we have as well, the legendary. Um, So would you pay one mana to discover a lackey? Because that's literally what this card is. Um... I think you could. I don't think this is insane, but I think you might do this. I wish this was zero mana, get a random key. That would be broken. It would be broken. It'd just be a random lackey for, I mean, you just... Zero throw. Broken. I, that, that would be a four for me in Warlock. Oh, yeah, I mean, no, that card would still be great. I don't, yeah. I don't even think it would be a four. I don't know. One mana's a lot. It makes your lackey cost two mana. That's yeah. That's my main issue. Like you get you get to, like. I'm not spending two mana for a cobalt lackey. I mean, I might spend two mana for a cobalt lackey if, if it's lethal. I'm not spending two mana for. I guess faceless lackey's okay. But you don't always get it. One mana is a lot. When you're a zoo duck. Mm, yeah. And you're not getting a minion for your one mana that you spent. That's a lot. I think, yeah. I initially I thought this would be great, but now that I'm thinking about it, I, I don't really want to pay one mana under for the it. Cable rat? Is is under the cable rat? Under the cable rat? So cable rat is three mana, you get a one one and a lackey. This is two mana, you don't get the one one, but you get the lackey. But this is also discovered, so it's a, a little bit better. I mean I don't think evil cable rat's that good of a card. I mean, if like evil that, that actually that's a good comparison though. Are, do you yeah. run evil cable rat and zoo right now? And I think the answer is no. Right. Um, now, would you run this to help support the evil recruiter? So, what are all the lackeys? It's it's cable rat. This evil genius. Is that it? Yeah. Just not feeling it. I just like evil genius is obviously insane. But cable running four cable rats in your deck for whatever mm -hmm. is not agreed. Like, you have four cable rats in your deck. Congratulations! Like the payoff of like having to draw your one of five mana four four that only affects six cards in your deck, or the evil recruiter. Somehow you magically get this. You're spending two mana. I guess your lackey lived, even though you're playing warlock and your opponent left up your lackey somehow. This is not three mana, this is four mana. This is similar to the the Shaman card, which was better. The Shaman card's better than this card, right? Yeah. The three three that deals three. Agreed. Not to me it was a two. <laughs> so I think this card's worse than that card. 
Um, I know we're kind of jumping. Sorry, I was kind of jumping around, but no, no, that's fine. All the lackey stuff is kind of tied together, so. Hey, I agree. It's good to look I at mean, them together. I mean, for me, this is like I am deciding between a one or a two. I think I'm gonna leave it at a two. I think it will be played. I think it might make the deck consistently a little bit weaker, but it gives you the high roll recruiter stuff. I don't. High roll recruiter stuff. I mean, like sometimes you just play a lackey on. Uh, okay, so re reasonably, how many? Or how do people deal with a lackey? Ping, I guess. Druid hero power. Warrior needs something on board already. If we're talking about curving it out, I mean, there's no way you're keeping this in your opening hand for one. Yep. Actually, okay, now, okay, now, now I'm thinking about it. I would never like keep this in my opening hand, and if I draw it and don't have anything else playable, I'm pretty sad about this too. Yep. To me, this is a one. To me, all the lackeys are ones, but I I'm just a grumpy Gus, I guess. I don't. It just this seems very inefficient. It also seems like poor deck building too. I don't know. Like I just. Feel like okay. I'm a hater, no, no. I, 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 I think know. I think I'm on you board. Can give it a, no, I, I, I don't think it is a two. I, I think, think if like go ahead. The the lackey stuff just needs to be better. That's why I said if this is zero mana, get a random lackey. Then I'm like I'm on board with like dark pharaoh because five mana four four ain't that bad, and three mana three three also ain't that bad. Um, getting a five five out of it, it's, it just feels just try so hard. But in the end, it doesn't even matter. I, 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 I think I'm on board. I was I was really gonna try it and argue, but I I can't. Like that's that's the thing. If I could have thought of something, sure, but I don't think this just to activate evil recruiter is good. And I definitely don't think the next card's good either. So because of that, I think this standalone is not great, and running it for the purpose of running other stuff isn't great either. Like maybe evil like I don't know, like Maybe Evil Recruiter isn't like a one because it's a three mana three three as a floor. Mm -hmm. I mean, you and, so uh, you still run Evil Genius in, in in Warlock right now. Yeah, you could yeah. have Evil Recruiters if you really wanted to. Yeah, you could add Evil Recruiter, but like, I mean, really, you're just trying to high roll with the. I mean, is it worth? All right, maybe. Hold on, is it worth? You could spend five mana for an eight eight, but you have to draw two cards. Mm -hmm. Five mana for an eight eight is like Sea Giant slash Fell Reaver. All right, Sea Giant is extremely good in Zoo, but it's also like way more flexible. But sure, you're all, the thing is you're also not doing anything for a couple of turns with Sea Giant. You've hit them in the head a few times, and the Sea Giant is setting up lethal. This is I'm for the first time playing something on turn three or four to develop a five five plus this three three or you combo it together later on like turn five and at that point if you go turn five deal lackey recruiter that's like okay but then i mean it, it is two cards out of your hand you do get the lackey effect uh. so the thing with evil recruiter is bare minimum you spend five mana for it that's a sinister deal yep uh one tick up is evil genius and you have to spend uh, six mana and a, and a minion in play. Uh, and then one tick up after that is six. I guess maybe not even a tick up. Evil Cable Rat probably easier to get off because you don't have to have a minion like Evil Genius. Yeah. Um, so I guess five to six mana for a lackey. You get a lackey and you get an eight eight. Eh, I mean, it's decent. And you have to draw them together. You draw Evil Cable Rat or Sinister Deal. I guess you have the Dark Pharaoh. But the Pharaoh's oh. really bad. I think this. I think this. Card, the next card is awful. Like I think it's abysmal. It's really hard to. They they don't let you have Lackey. They're just like we're gonna be really stingy with how we give you Lackey. What like what if you could just play Lackeys? Not Ethereal or Cobalt, but the other four or not Faceless either. I guess. <laughs> the other three. I, it's okay. I I don't think these cards are completely unplayable, and I, I don't want to give them a one. I just don't think they're a two. I think it's like okay, sinister deal. I think is like a one point five. All right, let's just. I'll I'll give sinister deal a two. Okay. I'll give dark pharaoh a two. You can give that a one. 
Oh, I'm, I'm, guess... I'm giving Dark Pharaoh one. I, I think this card is just awful. Okay. This is completely against what Zoo's trying to do right now. It has no synergy with... Okay, this makes it better with Carpet, but you have to have played this. You have to still have your lackeys and the Carpet. It, like... But you're playing it as a combo now. You're not playing stuff out to try and kill your opponent. You're like, let me wait some, you know, some amount of time, and then I'm going to try to make some big stuff. The whole point of, of Zoo is that you, you kill your opponent quickly. We're not trying to make like a control warlock because there's better ways to do that. And maybe there aren't better ways to do that, but I don't know. I'm I'm really not convinced about the, the Pharaoh, and because of that, I think Sinister Deal is less good. Anyway, um, we want to talk any more about these two or no? Nah, I think okay. we're good. Sure. So bam, 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 bam. I guess I'll do Plague of Flame. Uh, do, do you want to just speak over Dark Pharaoh just to talk about, like, the... No, I think you okay. got it pretty good. Plague of Flames. One mana spell. Destroy all your minions. For each one, destroy a random enemy minion. This is powerful. It's a lot better than that Unwilling Sacrifice garbage they came out with a few years ago. Three mana, sack a minion, destroy a minion. This at least is one mana. Still not great, but... I think Maybe this actually is good, and let me explain why. So A and Zoo, if you have this as a one of, like you can tech against majors. Oh, actually, this does destroy all your minions. Hold on, give me a sec. Yeah, it does read one mana destroy all your minions. Okay, I... I mm. that. Okay, maybe you don't run this in Zoo, but this does give control an option where you can run something like Reform Scheme plus this. Yeah. Or even anything plus this, honestly. You could just throw an egg out and do it with this. That might not be what you want to do, but I think this allows for some interesting things. I think the best use for this card is against, like, Rogue or something. Or, or maybe Mage, I don't know. Like, Cyborg, where you're just... I don't know, board in. You know, like, maybe Zoo already plays, like, both the eggs, so this card isn't bad to board in already. But you, I don't know. I could see it against Mage. That's about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess a two. Yeah, I think it's a two for me as well. All right. Uh, Disease Vulture. Four mana, three, five. It's damage. Summon a random three drop. Minion. Uh, Kind of already talked about this a little bit with Nerfuset Dealer. I don't think this card is that great. Comparing it to like Vex Crow, I guess. Vexcrow is a lot easier to trigger, but Vexcrow is also not statted as good. I don't yeah. know. How many good ways are there to summon extra or to damage yourself? To find like, do you want do you want good ways or ways? Just good ways. Um, give me one sec to figure out what I need to actually search for in the deal for damage and your hero. Dark Possession. Okay, let me read all of them. You can kind of figure out what you want to be good or not. Dark Possession, Flame Imp, Spirit Bomb, Blood Witch, but that only starts at the, happens at the start of your turn. Pit Lord, Bane of Doom, technically, but that's not going to be used. Uh, Dread Infernal, and that's it. So no, no Oh, Crystallizer. Bad. Actually, Crystallizer's not bad with it. Wow, that's actually probably the best one. Elven Archer isn't awful either. What did you search? Damage? A deal. Oh, deal? Yeah. Might not be the best thing to search, but... Mad Bomber. Dude. <laughs> yeah, there's Ornery Tortoise. Yeah, obviously, the, yeah, yeah, the hero power for sure. We're just trying to find, like, how many ways in total are there way to... Or, or how many, like, reasonable ways are there? Nah, I mean, this card's a one. Yeah, I don't think there's enough to make it good. This card needs to, like, be incidentally good. You know what I mean? It needs to, like, like this isn't a build-around card, you know? It's Yeah, it, it doesn't break the game. It's like, yeah. if this happens, cool. But there's, like, more zooey things you can do, and this isn't, like, powerful enough to make a control deck around. Yeah, exactly. And, it like, mid-range warlock doesn't really exist. Nope. Riff. Either tap tap giant, or they flame him, <laughs> knife juggler, magic carpet. Oh yeah, they do run juggler, huh? Okay, Riff Cleaver, six mana, seven five minion. Uh, battle cry, destroy a minion. 
Your hero takes damage equal to its health. Seems pretty powerful. But I don't think it fits in Zoo. And I guess how will this quite fit in a control warlock thing? Because it's 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 a destroying minion. Destroying minion is is a good effect. It's just a matter of how that happens and how is it costed. So like it's the same mana cost as Siphon Soul. The difference is instead of gaining three health, you lose some and you make a seven five. This card needs to like win you the game. Yeah. And, like very shortly after. Cause this effect for the amount of damage you take, killing something worthwhile is extremely significant in a long game. And it, obviously if you win in like that turn or turn after, it's like extremely insignificant. Um, so it's just a matter of how can you leverage getting to a position where spending your life is insignificant. And that seems very hard to do. Like this has to be a crazy swing turn. I mean, it is a good swing, but it's a matter of how often will this be good enough to win you the game? Because against something like aggro, this won't really help you too much. And against control, it's like fine, but it's not gonna win you the game outright. So you need something a bit better, I guess. It is a really big tempo swing. Like just on the surface, six mana, seven, five, destroy a minion. <laughs> That's a good question. What is Warlock's late game? Um, Draxis? But probably not, because that doesn't really work right now. This would have to be like the curve topper of your vulture deck or something. Yeah. Which like, I would rather just be playing Twilight Drake and Mountain Giant. Mm -hmm. This thing killing a Mountain Giant is extremely sick though. Like, True. If like your zoo, I guess. I don't know, zoo wouldn't play this. But yeah, it's, it's too slow for zoo. And then like, Here's the thing with Warlock. It got no cheap AoE. Like, ever since Warlock lost the file, it's just, it's not Warlock. Like, it's just hard to, like, play this, like, control deck. Because it just doesn't have, like, the cheap removal that it needs. Plague of Fames helps, but it's still not, like, it, it look, it's one mana, but it's not cheap enough because you need something else paired with it, and there's not yeah. that much that you can use. Yeah. Yeah, Warlock's uh, control identity has been lost since last year yeah r.i.p okay yeah i'm gonna give this a one i agree i don't think it's gonna see play all right uh next up evil recruiter card that a lot of people i'm sure think are like a four or a five i think this card is like a two i mean oh sorry three mana three three battle cry destroy a friendly lackey to summon a five five demon i mean yeah like when you get the payoff like this card's great but you have to play like really bad cards to get there not really bad but like suboptimal cards and on top of that like warlock doesn't like really scale that well into the late game so it just kind of feels like if you're playing warlock you want to get the game over fast this guy helps with that if you already have a lackey um but as you like scale later on into the game a deck full of like evil cable rats and evil recruiter and uh, what was the other one? Sinister, Sinister Deal is just not going to scale very well because um, everything else is just so inefficient. So yeah, I, I don't know. It's kind of a weird card. Like You have this one card that's like so insanely efficient at mana and every other card getting there is just so inefficient. It's like it kind of washes in the middle, I guess, but like I think overall it's still like a net negative. I mean, I'm going to give it a 2, but like I'm just not a really big fan of the deck that it goes into. That's that's my issue. Like, I think the effect is powerful, but it's not... Like, you can't run this by itself. You need the other lackey cards. And when you get the other lackey cards, you don't want to be like, oh, I'll wait for Evil Recruiter to hold this. You know, like, I'll hold this to wait for Evil Recruiter because the whole point of your game plan is to try and kill your opponent, which means you want to play stuff on board, so it's in play. And if this happens to hit, then that's good. But I don't know how often it will actually hit. Like, you don't want to hold on to a three-mana card because sometimes the payoff won't even be there. Hey, it's a two-point something for me, but I'll leave it as a two. And just to reiterate, guys, we're, we're kind of rating this based on how powerful we think it's going to be in the meta. Not that the card is bad. Like, this, like what we're saying, th these effects are powerful, but they just... You can't just put a card on a deck because the effect's powerful. 
the Megathune effect is very powerful, but we don't see it in Zoo. We don't see it in Control Warrior. I mean, sometimes in Warrior we see it, but like, you can't just include a card because it's powerful. So we're rating out on, on how it's going to fit into the meta and whether or not it's going to be played, not whether or not the card is busted. Although, if a card is busted, it'll likely see play. Expired Merchant. Two mana, two one. Minion. Battlecry, discard your highest cost card. And Death Rattle, add two copies of it to your hand. Um, so I loved Handlock and con like control -y decks like that back in the day, and I think this card would be really cool back then. But I don't think this really helps Control Warlock now. The effect is really cool, and, and I th I'd say kind of powerful. I wonder how this works with Mountain Giant. It probably doesn't work if Giant's like three mana, right? I think it goes by the printed text. Okay. Actually, that's really important to know. Hmm. I don't know. I think this card is like has the potential to be really good. Especially like if for some reason you have a Twisting Nether deck and you play this on turn two, I think yeah, you said it'd be better in like other metas. Yeah. yeah. If you could just like play this discard a twisting nether, get a second copy of nether in the late game, that's insane. Like you just have two full board clears. <laughs> it literally just doubles your board clears. Like that's so sick. I mean, I think this card's powerful. Eh, I I'm going to give it a two. I think it's playable. I think it's a pretty sweet card. Would this work in zoo? Uh, like what if your highest cost card is evil recruiter? I mean, it just dies, right? Like that's the cool part about it is Oh, you discard your card. Like, you could say that sucks, but how many turns is this 2-1 going to be alive? Not very long. No, that's what I mean. What if what if you do want your evil critter to be discarded? Because then you just, you're just you still Zooey, but then you have some gas, too. This is like 2 mana, deal 2 damage in a very inconvenient way for you. Because they get to decide how to trade into it. But it does deal 2 damage. Unless, like, they, if they're playing a card that says deal one damage to a minion, you're fine with that. Like, they just killed your guy and you just got a second copy of your card, and they spent a card to do it, and they spent mana to do it. This card's just good. It might even be a three. Fuck it. Really? Three. I don't think this is going to see. I mean, maybe people test with it. What else can you run? I guess you can get multiple sea giants, too. It just dies immediately. It's like a better loot hoarder. Right. Because right? you'd rather have the most expensive card twice i think then drawing like a random card from your deck i don't know maybe i'll just go back to it too no no, no. i'm just trying to think through it and kind of i mean it's basically loot hoarder right but it's just okay but what kind of deck are you running this loot hoarder in then exactly it's... i just think the copying of your most expensive card is what's cool about it i'm thinking more of like in I mean, there isn't really, like, a control-style Warlock deck. That's the problem. But I'm kind of thinking it's, like, good in that kind of deck. I, I don't think it's going to be good enough in Zoo. Just because the stat lines too isn't... Yeah, that, that's my issue with it in Zoo. Like, I think this would be insane in, right. in some yeah, control deck, but... This is the one. There's no control Warlock deck. <laughs> I'll go back to putting it to a 1, actually. I went I... from a, a 2 to a 3 to a 1. I'm gonna put a star next to this because this card is really powerful. It's just not right now. Yeah. Like over the course of the next few sets, maybe if we find some more tools for Control Warlock, maybe, but yeah, I'm not right now. You got the next one? Oh, sorry. Uh, embalming, four mana destroy a minion, shuffle three worthless imps into your deck. So worthless imp just being uh, one mana, one, one. Um, I mean, I, I remember some people saying they brought up the fatigue scenario with this card, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's something you really worry about right now. Again, like control warlock's not really a thing. I mean, it could be like this card. I think this card's like playable, but I don't know. I think I give it a one for now, just because like control warlock isn't really a thing, and it's not going to go like in a zoo style deck, right? So yeah. I mean, the one mana one one imps work with magic carpet and like grim rally and stuff, but it's not what you want to draw. It's crazy how like warlock is either stupid, broken, or just like complete trash. Like warlock's identity, like is just so weird. Like I get the whole self sacrificial thing, but like I feel like the fact that zoo is so good is kind of like an accident. Like I don't think they like really intended for zoo to be the nuts. 
for warlock or for warlock's archetype or identity or wherever but it just feels like all these things are worse than just like playing neutral good statted minions yeah like swinging that way i think i agree for now it's the one uh and finally the quest <laughs> it actually didn't matter if we reviewed this last or first which is funny um supreme archaeology quest draw 20 cards and reward is tome of origination which is your hero power becomes draw a card it costs zero so you don't take damage from tapping but you tap and it costs zero kind of the, the big problem in here is you have to draw 20 cards usually when i draw 20 cards i'd like to have won the game as warlock um the rare case might have been like but even in like <laughs> even in like um Q block, you'd rather just have won the game by that point. You can still play beyond that, but at that point, you're hopefully not tapping either because you want Gul'dan. I don't know. I, I You could probably set up some sort of combo where this would work, but I can't even think of a combo that could like abuse this, though. Because you have to use your hero power to draw the card. You can't even like finish the quest and then play Plot Twist because it's not a passive ability. You have to actively tap to get to that card. So if like you do have a combo set up, and like it's your natural draw you're like oh well crud now what so this has to for this to be played it just has to be naturally good where you tap into a card that's good but you'd have to have drawn 20 cards by that point already which means you're running plot twist which i don't is that even good i don't think it is basically what i'm trying to say is it, i don't think this is good i think this card the hero power is insane. Like, if you have that hero power, it's pretty insane. So I think the payoff is there. I mean, I just don't see, like, what... I Wait. mean, I'm just kind of flipping through the collection. But there's no, like, really high-costed minions you care about drawing to make zero. Or just cards, like, maybe Alex Straza, but then you have to put Alex in your deck. Maligos is a finisher, maybe, but, like... I don't know. Warlock just doesn't really have anything in its class. Arc villain reform. Starliner. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's like way too. Uh, it's a one. I mean, the plot twist stuff is cute, but. I think I agree. I don't think it's. Like, an another way to think about this is we're struggling this hard to find some way to make this not. to make it playable. Um, if stuff comes to mind where it's just like, oh, okay, I, I know how this works, this could work really well then that you know maybe it's playable but this is like we're struggling to find a way where this is is acceptable and i don't think we can easily find right now maybe someone comes up with some weird wacky combo but i, I saw some people in chat saying you can go after the quest you can like play something banker than tap if you have exactly one card left but or if you have zero cards left but i mean what what, what would you want to draw like if you empty your deck with this quest being completed, uh, then you play something, banker and tap. It guarantees something, but there's nothing... Like, what card would win you the game if that happened? I don't think there is one. Nope. Can't think of anything good. Liciana? Yeah, but that's not going to win you the game. You'd rather just run more impactful stuff. You can't play Mechathune and Bankrate. You'd need Double Galvanizer. And now you have Double Galvanizer and Mechathune, which are kind of dead cards. And again, this is kind of a problem if you're trying to empty your deck against Bomb Warrior. Yeah, no. This is, as always, Warlock's either given insane cards or trash cards. Okay. And here's one good card, Evil Recruiter. But mm -hmm. everything else is pretty bad. Okay. Warrior time? Yeah. All right. Armored Goon, six mana, six, seven. Whenever your hero attack, gain five armor. So Boulder Fist Ogre, just in case you wanted to play that card, just mm -hmm. got better. Uh, yeah, this is bad. This is a one. Nice arena card, though, I guess. Not much to say. It's just stats. Not playing Ogre in my deck. Is there any other, like, armor generation stuff with this expansion? Not really. No. Okay. Yeah. It's cute. But yeah, it doesn't do a whole lot. Tomb Warden. It looks like an arena card. Which one? The last card. Oh, yeah. yeah. This guy just looks like an arena card. Tomb Warden. Eight mana, three, six, taunt. Battle Cry, so I'm going to copy this minion. 
So kind of like the Serenite Chain Gang thing, and it's a mech. So if it gets buffed, there's two of these, not one. So by itself, it's an eight mana, two three sixes, which is what, six twelve worth of stats. And they're mechs, which means you can discover it. And it has taunt, which means you can discover it with the other taunt card here that lets you discover another taunt minion. So downside is that it's slow, but I mean... Eight mana is a lot Yeah, for just a taunt. That doesn't draw you cards or battle cry or do anything, just stats. Uh, that's a one for me. What if it has rush? What if it had rush? Ah. No, no, no. What if it has? Probably still be a one. It sometimes has rush. Oh, I see. It's a mech off Dr. Boom. Yeah. I guess this card's fine to get off Dr. Boom. I usually want, just want high value stuff off Omega Assembly anyways. Mm-hmm. So, seems good. Would you ever run this in, like, a Taunt Warrior deck? Would you run oh. a Taunt Warrior deck? I guess that's another question. So we have Shaggy, Armadillo, and Into the Fray. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Warrior's just the nuts. Uh, I, for me, Warrior's just all about Bloodsborne Mer Mercenary. Like, I just, it's hard to talk about Warrior without just mentioning that card. Okay. To me, that's just the best card of the set. Like, I think that card is just broken, and it's going to change the whole meta. It's the Messiah that we've all waited for. Hopefully it'll beat Mage. Okay. But yeah, so I just, um, I don't know. I don't think the Taunt Warrior stuff is as good as you could do with Bloodsworn Mercenary. Agreed. I think it's a little too cute. I think there might yeah. be some high rolls where you can get something going, but it's going to be inconsistent, and overall as a power level not as strong as what we have in Warrior now. I mean, Shaggy's really good, but, I mean, just, yeah, exactly. Well, Warrior has, Warrior just has the nuts right now. Like, <laughs> Warrior just has all the good cards. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't even think, like, I think the card's fine. I just don't think it'll see play is the problem. Not naturally, anyways. You'll get it off assembly or um, delivery drone or something. Yeah. I mean, the cards are cute, but they're just not that good. I mean, Into the Fray, Into Shaggy, I guess, is pretty good i just don't think the two morden is really what you want it's too slow into, like i don't mind into the fray because it's just one mana give it like a minion plus two plus two mm -hmm. like that's not bad and the six mana four seven taunt also isn't bad either just because like stat line's know. good and it, it's a buff as well yeah i mean it's playable i just don't think like two morden two morden's just too much mana okay to include into your deck Agreed. I think the card's good, but you don't run it naturally. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, Livewire Lance. Three mana weapon, 2-2. Two, two. After your hero attacks, add a lackey to your hand. Dang, why couldn't the other classes have got this card? So other classes been... need yeah. good lackey or generation. Man, Warlock or Shaman would love this card. But yeah, I don't think it's that good in Warrior, though. Like, Warrior just has better weapons, like range caliber and stuff. Like, improve mana deals sick. Imp sorry. Improve morale also was like a deep, like, it's just a fine lackey generator, but we didn't see it being played just because it didn't really fit. Yeah, right. Ever since the Boomsday Project, Warrior's just been the nuts with all the mech stuff, and this weapon doesn't make things any better, I don't think. I mean, it's a decent value card, I guess. Three mana deal for it. Like, it's decent. Like, it's just decent value all around. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's the thing. I mean, like, it's, it's a fine card, but, like, what are you running it in? Yeah, it's not going to be better than what Bomb Warrior's trying to do. Uh, Control Warrior's almost definitely not interested in this. Mm hmm So, there's no such thing as a Lackey Warrior. There's maybe a Taunt Warrior... There's Bloodsworn Mercenary Warrior, whatever whatever comes out of that. Um, card is just, what the fuck? <laughs> Every time I look at it, it's just like, what the fuck? Why did they make this card? Clearly broken. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I give Livewire Lance a one. Agreed. Quest, hack the system. Attack five times with your hero, reward, and refet's core. And this is, it changes your hero power to uh, summon a 4-3 golem. After your hero, your hero attacks, refresh this. 
So you can potentially summon multiple things in one turn. Um, and the golem's just a, a three-mana 4-3. Four, three. This is nice and all, but I don't think this is better than the Dr. Boom hero power. So I yep. don't see why you would run this over that. Easy. Easy one. It's like you could logically prove this to be a one. The, like, the value's fine off of it. The problem is it's, it's just not good enough. Yeah. Huh. Not gonna beat Dr. Boom. Next up, Plague of Wrath. Five mana, destroy all damaged minions. So we have Whirlwind. We don't have Blood Razor. There's just not a lot of good ways of dealing one damage to everybody. Uh, Literally just Whirlwind, maybe? Uh, you can do, like, Improve Morale, but that's just, like, a single target removal at that point. Execute. I mean, even if this killed two minions and it was just, like, double execute, it's still not good. Just a one. Cleave. Pyro commanding shout. Or pyro anything plus this. Warpath. Oh yeah, I forgot about Warpath. I like how I remember Whirlwind, but not War Warpath. <laughs> yeah. And that's about it. Past that, we're getting to like convoluted clears where you hope the dynamatic hits multiple things. Yeah. Powerful effect, difficult to enable. Yeah. And you'd like you'd have to commit multiple deck slots to be able to use this as a full clear. And I think Warrior's kind of just happy already with the brawls and like the devastators and the war paths. Like they do enough by their own, like on their own, so not a huge reason to commit more into a and this lets you go like again again, whirlwind plague or like warpath plague if you need to deal with a huge board. Maybe you like throw one of these in in like a specialist deck against mage but even then like yeah maybe actually against mage yeah i just rather have super collider two super colliders two brawls yeah that's fair actually that's enough and you yeah and you don't have to commit that many deck slots for that okay i think this is one yeah Oof, feels bad not looking great so far for warrior <laughs> yep, good cards coming up. True, true. Frightened Flunky. Two mana, two, two. Taunt. Battle Cry, Discover Taunt Minion. The effect's good. Stat line's not super crazy. It has taunt. It works with some of the other taunt stuff we're talking about. Um, maybe a two? I don't know if you actually play this, though. I mean, it uh... feels bad when everything we come back to is, is this better than what we currently have? And if the answer is no, then it doesn't see play. It's at least a two. This card's just good. Yeah, I'm okay with it too. It's a cheap card that replaces itself. Like, I just... In general, Actually, that's true. Like, and and Word doesn't have two drops right now. Honestly, I'm just going to give it a three. Fuck it. I think this card's a three. Really? Okay. Like, like, I mean, I'm kind of like moving away from like the current meta sort of thing and kind of more just about like I think like one of the best things you can do in Hearthstone is just play a card that replaces itself, like Blink Fox and Hinge Clan Burglar, Stonehill Defender. Obviously, yeah, is Stonehill a, obviously is great. Person. Anything that generates lackeys, even like Banana Buffoon. But like when you have a cheap card that generates another card, and this card is also has Taunt, and it discovers like specifically a Taunt minion, mm -hmm. which in a lot of situations is relevant. Um, yeah, I just I think it makes it overall really strong. I don't I, I don't know like it's hard for me to argue if it's better than so and so card and warrior right now, but I could see control where you're playing this. Oh yeah, and control warrior I think for sure this is played. This flexibility yeah. is pretty good too. I give it a three. I feel like in terms of like stuff you want to do, you doing in Hearthstone, this card's perfect. I forgot Start about with it, even if you wanted to. I forgot about control warrior. Yeah. All right, I, I'm I'm up for a three actually. Uh, next up is Into the Fray. One mana, give all taunt minions in your hand, plus two, plus two. Kind of reminds me of Soul Infusion. It would be sweet if Serenite Chain Gang actually worked with that and also it was legal. But unfortunately, we can't do this with Serenite Chain Gang. So, that's uh, probably, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's either a one or a two. Dude, Warrior literally has no taunts. What the hell? No, if you go, 
If you go in the collection right now and type taunt, Warrior has no taunts. Not a single card with taunt. Is this a joke? Is this a, is this a joke? Warrior doesn't have a single taunt and they make this card? What the hell? Okay, I've been muted. Let me repeat that. So even Sorry, if you... No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, you're, I was good for you, but I muted the OBS. Um, oh, I thought you said I muted you. No, 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 no. I was muted. Like, if you hit a gold share footman and a frightened flunky, just that, like, this becomes a turn one play into a turn two, four, four, and then like a turn three, three, four with two mana left over. Like, that's very specific, but I mean, in late game, if you just hit bigger targets like Armageddon or Tomb Warden, then it still becomes like fine. You could make like a control warrior that has some extra value through these taunts, and it you can be a little bit like tempo aggressive -y with it. Not that much, but I, I think it could see play. I see what you're saying. We saw Gold Trier Footman in, in, in Quest Warrior before, right? Like, really? Someone, yeah, some, some people were running them in tournaments. I want to look at the neutral taunts real quick for the new set. Because I don't see any good ones that are currently in the... Uh, Belligerent standard. Gnome? Two mana three, was it three six would it be? With it's the into the fray? Good. It's not good, but it's like... Okay, what if you had Bronze Gatekeeper? I mean, I don't want to build a deck around this, but I'm saying you could run some standalone okay cards with it. Uh, just to find some what you think are, is okay. I don't, I don't know. I don't really see it. Okay, now that I'm looking through the rest of the current neutral pool, I'm, I'm kind of turned off a little bit. Yeah, I'm actually going to revise Shaggy to a two <laughs> after looking through the neutral taunt pool. It's really bad out there. So with the added uh, multiplier of getting warrior taunts off of the discover you're quite often going to be offered one of two more than armagadillo or flunky right oh wait yeah you're right wait how often can you flunky into flunky that i don't know it it would be sim it would be more often than messenger raven into raven you can flunky into flunky and eh, whatever i'm still i'm still giving it a two the warrior this taunt pool just seems really poopy Okay. I think I'm going to give into the fray at two. Oh, I'm giving that a one. Okay. Okay. Bloodsworn Mercenary. Three mana, three, three. Battle cry, choose a, a damage friendly minion and summon a copy of it. This is pretty good. It's pretty sweet. I mean, you can run it on like anything. Obviously, there's good applications on Death Rattle and Reborn and stuff like that, but it's the cards just. I feel like this is like how Warrior is going to beat Mage. Mm -hmm. It's just like frothing, coin frothing berserker, inner rage it, play bloodsworn mercenary, mage auto loses. Like it's a lot of cards you're already not currently currently running in the deck. Oh yeah, I mean you True. just you would play like Corcoran Elite and like obviously like you would just play like aggro mm -hmm. like Corcoran Elite and Leroy and inner rage. Um, I guess it could just like be bomb warrior esque. I feel like. The sweet thing about this card is it gives you it just makes inner rage like really good because sure. um, you can translate inner rage it is one of those something. cards that's obviously just by itself like dealing one damage doesn't matter if you paid zero mana for it or one mana for it dealing a single point of damage is not very exciting for a singular card to do but when you have cards like battle rage and bloodsworn mercenary in your deck like the payoff is now there and i think that because you have battle rage in tandem with this you can justify running cards like Whirlwind. You can justify running cards like Frothing Berserker and Acolyte of Pain. Sure. You maybe even justify Armor Smith. I don't know. You can justify improved morale as well. Um, Leroy? Yeah, it's just like all these cards that were like kind of poopy by themselves. This card just like is like, all right, everyone, come on. Like, you're all useful now. And, okay. Yeah, so well, I'm, I'm giving this card a five. Okay. Cause so I can give a card a five. Wow, I'm gonna give it a four. Um, now, would this card let you, okay, because of this card, would you start running Overlord's Whip? I don't think so. That's just, that's okay. kind of an uncontrollable effect. I, know, I, I agree, but I, I think- If I could discard the whip at any time, I think it'd be better. I think there's there's already enough ways to trigger like this this ability because you have inner rage, improved morale, 
Uh, you could run Warpath if you wanted, because I suspect you still run Doctor Boom in this deck. Yeah. It just kind of become like more of a. It's like you can swap to control. That's the cool thing about this deck in Specialist too. Is uh, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how you can like switch this deck's role depending on what you want it to do in certain metas, or against certain decks. Mm -hmm. Um, because like yeah, you can have this aggro package, but then you can like maybe board in super colliders or something for mage or board in brawls for aggro and just because you have dr boom so it's really easy to configure your deck to warriors naturally a control deck and this card's obviously like a combo slash uh tempo card so i mean that's a cool part about it right is it's literally like a combo card and a tempo card yeah like that's so insane it's flexible is there a way to like copy it like get more copies baleful banker I just want to play. I just want to play a deck full of this card. Brewmaster. Both brewmasters. The new shuffle card as well. Although the new shuffle card is not reliable. Damn! If only Warrior could play Shadow Step. Oh my God! Can you imagine Shadow Stepping this card? Can you imagine Shadow Stepping Shaggy? <laughs> Probably not as good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next one then. Oh, sorry, I have it. Uh, oh, yeah, no worries. Armageddon. Six mana, four, seven taunt, which is like Archmage plus taunt. I don't know. Are there any other six mana, four, seven taunts? Probably is. At the end Violet of Warden? Able... Oh, yeah, Violet Warden. So it's a Violet Warden that instead gives all taunt minions in your hand plus two, plus two, which is pretty bleh. Like, I guess if, like, Shaggy and Zilliax... Or Shaggy, Zilliax... Yeah, yeah, they're good taunts. I mean... If we're playing... Let's say we are playing Armageddon or Armageddon. It's not that unreasonable to say we could run Tomb Ward and then... It's not, but... The problem is it's, like, a late-game thing, so it, it's more Warden of a control. Has too many good cards to play Tomb Ward in. Yep. Feel like. And because of that, that means there's fewer things that Armageddon is good with. So I don't think it like the, the again the effect is powerful and the card stat line is just fine. It's just like you're not gonna if this was a mech, maybe even, but it's a beast, so you can't discover it. I don't know. I like the card. I think it's a two. I think there might be some control warrior deck that does run these taunts that we're talking about. Alright, I can see that. I'll give it a 2. Restless Mummy. 4 mana, 3, 2. Rush Reborn. I'm giving this card a 4. Really? This card is almost strictly better than Militia Commander. Really? Yes. It's not better if it kills a 2-2. Two -two. Sure. I think that's one of the only instances. It is. I thought about this earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody has. It's the most obvious comparison. Uh, I have not taken a stance either way. I was just going to play this and play some Militia Commander and see how it felt. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the fact that this deals 6 damage when you need it to deal just deal strictly damage makes it better because that's a lot of time we use Commander for. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's kind of nice to Commander bump like a 2-3, have a 2-4 left over. Sure. This guy does not enjoy that uh, nice value bump. Might not be an issue for Warrior. Oh, by the way, what did you... Do Reborn minions come back, like, damaged? They don't, do they? They come back damaged with one health. Oh, they, oh, they do come back damaged. Yeah, so you they can be healed back up, which... Oh, I thought you knew that for Priest. I think I just forgot. That's but fine. now that you mentioned Priest, I remember now. Um... You know, this this actually, technically doesn't kill a miscreant though. This is probably good in the Bloodsworn Mercenary uh, Battle Rage deck then, right? Because you just play it because you can just like trade and yeah. it's always damage. sure. Well, I guess it's same thing with Militia Commander. But this card you can like deal five damage to a Mountain Giant with Dynamatic, and then just like trade this guy in and have a three one left over. I know you can't. Dynamatic kills it. Never mind. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it has pros and cons. 
I'm, I think I'm gonna I just, give it a two. I just don't know. Wow. If it's... Okay. Yeah. I feel kind of bad giving it a four now. Why? If you like it, you can give it a four. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I'm happy with that. I, mean, um, I give militia commander too, as well. So I guess it's just like, what, do you, what would you give militia commander? I don't remember. I think so I give what it. What would you give it like right now? Like how good do you think it is? Well, that's. I think that's a different story because we played it for like thousands of games. Like militia commander would never be good if it weren't for town crime. True, so but that's that... kind of my problem mm. with giving it a high rating. It's just dependent on like Town Crier is the real star because it's just so insane that you want to play anything for the payoff to have a one mana one two that draws you a card. Okay. I guess that's like how I'd rate things. I mean, you could like rate them equally, I guess, because you could say Town Crier is not good without the Rush minion. Like it's just like the two in tandem with each other. All right, I'll, I'll just give it a three. Whatever. Okay. It's good because Town Crier is good. I think that's a fair assessment. Yeah. Okay, we got through the classes. Let's take a quick look at what's up there. So Druid still has gotten the most good cards. And then it's... I think this warrior is a little skewed because of my force. Well, Bloodsworn oh, Mercenary. Yeah. Bloodsworn Mercenary carried work a little, a little bit here. Yeah, it did. Even when warrior gets all ones, it still outperforms all the others. Yeah. Wow. Okay.